diver out with a spoon. Look at the fish finder. It's still not high tide yet. We've got an hour, but we're trolling at about 190 feet deep. Or 100, 100 feet and 90 feet. We're at 150 feet of water. It's still early in the morning. We'll drop it a little later, but uh, keep you posted. Sound, we'll do a little how to downrigger video. We got one like 42 inches from your flasher to your hoo to your spoon. If you want to be in here while you're doing this and look tangled, you'll let your line about 15 or 20 feet off the boat. Like this. You'll set your rod down, get your downrigger clip. clip uh, Fifty. So we'll drop it uh, down right here. Down to about 150 feet. So once you have your downrigger down to your desired depth, being careful not to pop the clip, you put the rod in the holder and crank down as tight to the clip so you can see when you've got a fish. If it's not tight enough, you won't tell if you have a shaker and you'll be wasting it. Pull that down tight. You're gonna look at your fish finder and adjust the depth on your downrigger according to where you see the bait holes. Works out pretty good right here. And then you're just gonna want to troll with the current usually, keeping your downrigger line at about 45 degree angle. You work hard, put your time in. You'll end up catching good fish. This is what we got earlier today. We didn't get it on video. You see it's a nice king. Now, one thing to remember, if you do catch a nice fish like this, you don't want to just keep fishing. You want to take the time to knock it, bleed it, put it on ice right away. You can see we have this one sitting in the ice, so we'll keep you posted. A couple of the lures and techniques you can use while you're trolling to catch these kings and coho. One thing you can do is use bait. We don't have any today, but this is a herring helmet or whatever you call it. It puts a nice even spin on your herring. You don't have to deal with the mess of cut plugging it. You just clip it right in there. Something else you can do, you can run a spoon right out of the clip or behind a flasher. You're going to want to put this at least three or four feet behind your flasher. so doesn't impede too much on this action. Another way you can do it is how we caught that other one earlier. You can run hoochies behind your flasher. You want to make sure this is no further than three or four feet from your flasher because the flasher is giving it all the action. And I like to keep these pre-tied ready to go. For kings, these clear whites work pretty good. For coho, the flashier blues work really good. For kings, a general rule of thumb is to start at 90 or 100 feet in the morning and then drop down 10 feet every hour. Or if you have a fish finder, just look at the bait. General rule of thumb for coho, same gear you use for kings, you just bring your stuff up in the water column, start at 30 or 40 feet in the morning, and then every hour after 8 o'clock, drop it 10 feet. When you're netting a fish for your friend or by yourself, if you're by yourself, you're going to extend the net out. And you want it to be kind of planing on the top of the water with its head out of the water while you lead it into the net. And that's just so the hooks don't get caught on the outside of the net and the fish gets away and it's not in the net. So just another thing to keep in mind. Now, if you don't have a downrigger, another way to go for these salmon in the Puget Sound is a diver. You'll just run this straight off your rod. This will basically just dive and it'll get you like 30, 40 feet down, which is good for the morning for coho bite. You can definitely get fish like that. You can run a herring behind these spoons. You can run these small 8 inch flashers and uh, hardware squids. And how these work is it's just a little barrel pops into your clip. And when the fish bites, it's just pulling the clip out. So then you're really only fighting just the weight of the fish, not pulling it to dive. 
So for jigging for salmon, I like to use point wheels and darts. And something I like to do before I use them to stock is I'll replace the troubles with a single, obviously. And I like to put a barrel swivel in between the split ring so it gives the fish room to play freely and not use the split ring as leverage. And when you're using jigs, you're constantly going to be tapping bottom or going through weeds and stuff like that. And every so often, like every 10 times you bring it up, you're going to want to run the hook through a hook file. Because with the jig, it's super important to have sticky sharp hooks because the second they feel the hook, they're going to want to get away from it. Ladies and gentlemen, we moved new spots. Eric joined us, he's on board now. Of course, hoping to punch another king for someone, but uh, right now we're trolling about 190 feet deep. Well, that's how deep it is, we're trolling about mid column, so see what we can do. We might get some resident coho while we're here too. We got a run into hoochie on the down rear and a kingfisher spoon on the diver, so see what we can make happen. Yeah, in the evening, they get a little more active to come push the herring to the surface. And you always got to look to where the bait is. So you want to be scanning out, looking for seagulls or other birds. When you have all the bait in the 